Hi, hey, hello you guys. I'm back with another reaction video. I hope that all of you are great today. So we're gonna check out Athletes Who Were Caught Cheating Part 2. So let's go. In the sporting world, athletes, right. coaches, and teams will go to extraordinary lengths to try and get the upper hand. And while some train hard, others resort to foul play to claim a spot on the podium. But once they get mm -hmm. caught, it's game over. With that, let's take a look at even more athletes who were caught cheating their way to victory. <laughs> Crashgate some cheats can take just seconds to execute, but as Formula One team Renault discovered, even the most seeming I live in southern France, you guys, and you know they have the Monaco. Only simple schemes can have Formula disastrous one, repercussions. On the 14th lap of the Spanish 2008 Grand Prix, Renault racer Nelson Piquet Jr. Grand accidentally Prix. smashed into the barrier on the 17th turn. Miraculously, he walked away uninjured, but a safety car was deployed, holding up the racers behind. It gave Nelson's teammate, Fernando Alonso, a fortunate advantage, and he went on to win the race for Renault. Even though it looked like a dangerous stroke of luck, it would eventually transpire that there was something else driving Renault's wondrous win. In 2009, Nelson hit another metaphorical wall when he was axed from the team after failing to score any points during the season. In He's losing on purpose? Enraged by the decision, Nelson's father revealed that his son had been ordered to crash by none other than Renault's managing director, Flavio Briatore, and director of engineering, Pat Simmons. These two big bosses had orchestrated Alonso's success by sacrificing young Nelson threatening to cut him from the team if he didn't go through with it. Whoa. He was given explicit instructions to crash on the 14th lap at the 17th turn, as there was no crane on that stretch to help remove the car. This would force a safety car at the opportune oh. moment and hand Alonso the win on a silver platter. After a thorough investigation, Renault apologetically admitted to the flagrant race fixing and the International Automobile Federation banned Briatore and Simmons wow. from the sport. However, the ban was unbelievably overturned by the French courts in 2010, meaning both men were free to return to Formula One by 2013. How agonizingly frustrating is that? Ugh, let's relieve Sheesh. some of that stress for a moment. Corruption. If you think Briatore deserved a harsher punishment, smash that like button. If you think Simmons should steer clear from the sport forever, slam that subscribe button. And if you think neither of them One thing I must say, like they, they admitted it. I don't like when people still like don't admit what should be allowed to yeah, race track ever up. again, hit both. Hit Will both. Smith. He may share his name with the Fresh Prince, but there's nothing cool about Will Smith, the former no. Milwaukee Brewers' pitcher. That's because this pasty imitator was caught cheating on the baseball pitch back in 2015. In a baseball match against the Atlanta Braves, something about Ooh. Will caught the opposing team's eye when he stepped on onto the mound. It wasn't his pitching that got their attention, but the horrendously obvious sticky substance coating his right arm. It looked like Smith was openly using the tacky substance to give him a better grip on the ball. While the use of foreign substances is strictly prohibited in Major League Baseball, many players still sticky subtly situation. use them, particularly if it's a cold night and it's hard to get a grip. But Will's use was so noticeable that the Braves could see it glinting over 60 feet away in their dugout. It was also clearly visible on TV, and umpire Jim Joyce only needed to touch his arm briefly before ejecting Smith from the game. As you can see, he was not He's happy mad. about being called out in front of a crowd. Embarrassed and humiliated, he threw a little temper tantrum before disappearing into the dugout. He later claimed that it was a mix of sunscreen and rosin he'd been using to practice, and had forgotten to wipe off his arm. But for all his weak excuses, he was still slapped with an eight-game suspension. Looks like his game got flip-turned upside down. Hmm. Adley. Hmm. Sammy Sosa. Sosa. Baseball fans probably remember Sammy Sosa for the incredible home run records he set back in the late 1990s. But the Chicago Cubs player may have been playing dirty to claim that clean streak. 
In 2003, Souza stepped up to the plate against the Tampa Bay Devils and hit the ball so hard that it shattered the bat. But as they picked up the pieces, umpires noticed bits of cork poking out of the wood. Corking a bat like this was once believed to make the bat lighter, giving hitters a quicker swing that increased their odds of making a home run. However, science has since proven that this is not the case. While a lighter bat doesn't aid in hitting for power, it can help delay the batter's swing for a crucial fraction of a second, allowing them to aim their hits more accurately. Nevertheless, the bat Souza had used went against major league regulations and he was immediately ejected from the game. Afterwards, he claimed he'd picked up the bat by mistake after using it during practice to put on a show for the crowd. However, that admission made his fans' hearts Why drop was it even there? lower. Like, is it easy? He just said he took it from, like, what? Because it brought all of Souza's famously powerful home runs into question. To make matters oh, even no. worse, a recent change in his usually slender physique to a now bulky, brutish slugger fueled suspicions that he was also using performance-enhancing drugs. Under a dark cloud of judgment, a Major League Baseball investigation fortunately found that none other of Sosa's 76 other bats had been corked, supporting mm. his explanation. He also never tested positive for any trace of performance-enhancing drugs. Even so, Sosa was still suspended for a total of seven games, reduced from eight. The incident didn't Sheesh. just shatter his bat, it also shattered his reputation. This means that despite his incredible home run records, Sosa has never been inducted into the Hall of Fame, and wow, sadly, but, he probably he... never will be. Lance but they, like, you know, did the ch checks and everything, like he... Still Armstrong. Oh, just there I don't are even know what liars, there are cheaters, and then there's cyclist Lance Armstrong. Unfortunate. Strong. The seven-time Tour de France winner famously denied using performance-enhancing drugs throughout his career. But the truth eventually caught up with him. In 2010, Armstrong's former teammate Floyd Landis was stripped of his 2006 Tour de France win amid a blood doping controversy. Blood doping involves removing well-oxygenated blood from the body and then transfusing it back via injection during opportune moments in the competition. This boosts the athlete's ability to oxygenate their muscles, illegally improving their performance. What? However, Landis decided that he wasn't going down on his own and indicated Armstrong had also been scandalously involved. Because wow. both riders. But how can they know? Like, if you just take your own blood out and put it somewhere, like, who? Someone is telling you guys. Someone is telling. I mean, he did, but who told on him? were sponsored by the U.S. Postal Service at the time, the allegations prompted a federal investigation. And in 2012, formal charges were brought against Armstrong. While he vehemently denied the accusations, enough evidence was put forward to strip the champion of all seven Tour de France titles wow. and ban him from cycling for life. With nothing left to lose, in 2013, Armstrong confessed to years of lies and deceit live on Oprah. In all seven of your Tour de France victories, did you ever take banned substances or blood dope? Yes. And as you'd expect, the biggest lie Jeez. in sporting history had one of the biggest financial consequences. The U.S. Postal Service took Armstrong to court for federal fraud, forcing him to cough up an eye-watering $5 million to settle their claims. But was it all really fair? I mean, in the last 10 years, there have been well over 100 cyclists caught doping. But only three, aside from Armstrong, have been banned from the sport for life. What? So, do you think Lance deserves another chance, or would you like to see him kick to the curb for good? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Vincenzo Sheesh. Nibali Thanks to the aforementioned Lance Armstrong- The cycling people! Armstrong, cycling now has a reputation for being filled with like-minded cheaters. 
However, the punishing uphill climbs and high speeds have led to more inventive methods of cheating that don't involve drugs, as Vincenzo <laughs> Nibali here is about to demonstrate. The 2014 Vincenzo. Tour de France winner was involved in a crash during the 2015 Vuelta a España. After falling well behind the front runners, Nibali was suddenly approached by a team car and suffered from a case of what pro cyclists call sticky bottle. This happens when riders return to team cars to retrieve drinks without stopping. But when the handover occurs, the person in the car holds onto the bottle for an extra few seconds, effectively towing the rider along to give them an illegal boost. In Nibali's case, he must have been really thirsty, because the team car practically towed him off into the sunset. While many professional cyclists use this tactic subtly, Nibali's obviously free ride, which was hilariously captured by an eye oh in the sky, got him disqualified. Both he and team director Alexander Schaefer, who was driving the car, received a fine of just 200 euros. Considering it's a practice that almost every cyclist participates in, do you think the judgment was fair, or should Nibali have received harsher punishment for his sticky joyride? I mean, they took the title from him. Sal Alosi. Some of football's most famous cheating scandals focus on doping, deflated pigskins, and illegal negotiations. But in 2010, New York Jets strength coach Sal Alosi found a new way to cheat in the field. In a game mm -hmm. against the Miami Dolphins, Sal went out of his way to trip up Dolphins gunner Nolan Carroll on the sideline during the play. Fortunately, Carroll was uninjured and returned to the game. However, Alosi's but. noticeable knee caught the attention of CBS sport commentators, who rightfully threw him some well-earned shade. NFL. Watch the knee here being stuck out on purpose to trip up Nolan Carroll. Not sure who that person is, but they should be ashamed of themselves for that type of action that has no place. Those words must have hit Alosi hard as he came forward the next day and apologized for his callous actions. While the NFL tallied up an appropriate punishment, it also emerged that Alosi had ordered inactive Jets players to form a human barricade on the sideline throughout the game. As they stood shoulder to shoulder like a Rockets kick line, the lineup ultimately made it harder for the opposing team to pass through. With all the unsportsmanlike behavior racked up against him, Alosi was slapped with a fine of $25,000 and was suspended without pay for the rest of the season. He oh. resigned from the Jets in January 2011 and hasn't worked in the NFL since. I guess he may have been a decent person like you or I once, but then he took a gunner to the knee. Breezy AC Manzale the ex-NFL quarterback Johnny Manziel made headlines recently for cheating on his wife. But if we rewind back to February 2019, his wife... Is that a crime? Even though it's bad. It's very bad. Manziel also made headlines for cheating. Although also she broke rules, not just vows. The fitness and Instagram model took part in the 2019 Run Like a Diva Half Marathon, completing what? the... Cool like lap course in one hour and 58 oh, minutes God. with no prior training. Considering the average half marathon time for non elite female runners is around two hours and 24 minutes, this was quite impressive. That was until people took a closer look at her mile split times. She'd hit the 6.4 mile mark in an hour and 31 minutes, but had finished the entire 13.1 mile course just 27 minutes later. For this to have been possible, TAC Manziel would have needed to run the final 6.7 miles at an unbelievably speedy pace of 4 minutes Sheesh. a mile. For reference, the women's world record for the fastest mile run was 4 minutes and 12 seconds, and that was just one. So, TAC Manziel would have needed to break that record six consecutive times after already having run over six miles, and all without mm, any he, training. What did she While do? it was obvious that she'd been cutting some corners, she angrily took to Instagram to prove her innocence by posting this picture of the 11 mile marker. So, how could she have taken the photo if she hadn't run the whole course? Despite her defense, online sleuths revealed she'd probably only run the first lap of the two-lap course, taking photos of every marker along the way. 
It may have all been a simple mistake of turning left at this point, where she should have turned right to complete the second lap. However, all her bragging on now-deleted social media posts and no hint of an apology has left this fitness model looking like an iconic cheater. Must run in the family, I guess. Antonio ah, Margarito. Smart there. When it comes to boxing, you might think getting away with cheating inside the ring is impossible, seeing how closely the fighters are being watched. But even thousands of eyes and hundreds of cameras can still miss tiny details, which is exactly what led to Miguel Cotto's bruised ego and face back in 2008. In Las Vegas' MGM Grand, the welterweight champion stepped confidently into the ring against Antonio Margarito. Although he looked vicious, Cotto wasn't concerned. After all, he was the favorite to win and had won his last 33 consecutive fights. Oh God, but after 11 ringing. rounds, Cotto was a bloated, bloody mess, while Margarito kept going strong and was eventually declared the champion. The world of boxing was left reeling from the unprecedented loss. However, it would all make sense six months later, when Margarito went on to fight Shane Mosley. Just before he could slip on his gloves, someone noticed no. strange yellow powder like stains on Margarito's bandaged hands. Commissioners cut the tainted wraps off and sent them to the lab, where it was discovered the yellow substance was in fact gypsum. When combined with a liquid like sweat, it would form plaster of Paris, a brick-like substance used in medical casts. It was clear that Margarito had been planning to pummel his opponent with illegally stony oh, strikes, and sheesh. it wouldn't have been the first time. A look back at the bandages from his fight ah, against Cotto revealed yeah, those yeah, same yeah, yeah, telltale yeah. powder stains, explaining why Cotto had oh taken such God. a brutal battering. Margarito and his trainer Javier Capitello, who had been in on the whole scheme, had their licenses revoked for a year. But wow. Cotto would eventually get a shot at revenge. He challenged Margarito to a match once his license was restored in 2011. Fueled by vengeance, the match ended in a total knockout victory to Cotto, and justice was finally served, along with go. the side of a knuckle sandwich. Louis Resto Alas, Margarito wasn't the only boxer to bring a brutal assault into the ring. In 1983, welterweight Louis Resto went toe-to-toe -to -toe with undefeated champion Billy Collins. But shockingly, after 10 rounds, Resto was declared the winner, while Collins came out of the fight looking like he had been beaten within an inch of his life. His eyes were swollen <gasps> shut oh and he'd God! suffered a torn iris, permanently oh blurring his vision. But oh it God. wasn't until Billy's father and trainer, Billy Collins Sr., shook Resto's hand that he noticed his gloves felt and looked suspiciously thin. These gloves. You can't hold The New York Boxing State Commission investigated Collins's claim and revealed that Resto's trainer, Panama Lewis, had removed an ounce of padding from each glove. This made Resto's punches much harder and way more damaging to Collins, which explains why the boxer looked like he'd been hit by a car. Oh. The commission oh. also concluded that Resto knew about the tampering and had gone along with his trainer's plan. Lewis's boxing license was revoked and Resto was suspended indefinitely. But their beating didn't stop there. During a news conference, Resto admitted to using tape to wrap his hands that had been soaked in plaster of Paris. Oh. Just like Margarito, Resto had been pummeling Billy with a pair of rock-hard casts underneath oh, yeah, his padded gloves. Yeah. Both men stood trial for assault, conspiracy, and criminal possession of a deadly weapon. They were found guilty of all charges, landing each of them with two and a half years of jail time. Looks wow. like they couldn't handle the fight when the gloves were off. Ramado wow. Fanati Keeping your cool is an integral part of being a professional athlete, something that motorcyclist Romano Fanati clearly doesn't know anything mm. about. Competing as part of the 2018 San Marino Moto2, Fanati so was aggressively overtaken by competitor Stefano Manzi. Enraged by the maneuver, Fanati decided to undertake one of the most stupid and dangerous cheats in sporting history. As they reached speeds of 140 miles per hour, Fanati leant over and pulled the front brake of Manzi's bike. 
The oh idiotic God. scheme could have crashed and killed his opponent, oh but he God. clearly thought he could get away with the split-second decision. Fortunately, cameras caught every what second of his stupidity. He everywhere. was immediately disqualified, his racing license was revoked, and his contract with the Marinelli Snipers was terminated. It was such oh. a serious breach of conduct so that the stupid. Italian justice system even considered putting him on trial for attempted murder. Romano Whoa. later apologized for his horrendous actions, but very few believed it was sincere. After all, this moron had a history of kicking other competitors' bikes mid-race, and even turning their engines off at the starting line. Huh? I think we can all agree he was probably just sorry he got caught. Oh my god. Alessandro Andrioli as methods of cheating get more and more sophisticated, so does the technology designed to spot them, something that cyclist Alessandro Andrioli found out the hard way. The 53-year-old came third in an amateur cycling event in Bidizzole, Italy in July 2017. But after he crossed the finish line, he was suddenly flagged by race officials. Without his knowing, they've been using a brand new weapon in their arsenal against cheating, thermal cameras. With this new tech at their fingertips, officials could easily scan bikes for suspicious-looking heat signatures, indicating if there were hidden electric motors inside the athlete's equipment. Unfortunately, the seat and tube like of an Andrioli's amateur... Argon 18 bike lit Conch. up on the camera like a Christmas tree, and officials ordered him to bring his bike around for inspection. But before they could disassemble it, Andrioli admitted his guilt and was disqualified from the standings. Aye. While this cheap thwarting tech has been used to successfully level the playing field, it's not accurate enough to prove any foul play for certain. Back in 2016, for he example, thermal cameras supposedly caught Slovenian rider Primoz Roglic trying to cheat his way through the Strada Bianca race. Hotspots on the thermal images of his bike indicated there was something kicking out a lot of heat in the rear wheel, more than what would be expected from friction alone. Even though his bike was never checked for a hidden motor, the images were broadcast across French television for the nation to judge. Many believed the rider was guilty of mechanical doping, although Roglic strongly denied the allegations. Check? But what further suspicions were raised against him. Just the previous month, Roglic had made a suspiciously late bike change during the Gira d'Italia time trial. While he achieved the fastest time out of the group, this change meant his winning bicycle hadn't been tested for a motor then either. Why? Even though the allegations were peddled against him, the thermal images on their own ultimately weren't enough to condemn him of any wrongdoing. But what do you think? Does it really? <laughs> Oh well you guys, that was the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!